Welcome to this uh, week's episode of Lon Lobos. I am uh, one half of your host, Jacob Scott Thomas Bertrand, wearing my new Spurs jersey. What number are you? Number 10. Okay. I like Spurs. And you know, I am your second half, uh, you know, your fucking... Number fucking, 11 half. Uh, you can't wearing, see that at all. <laughs> I'm, number 11, bro. <laughs> number 11. Um, wearing my sports jersey. What? I, what? Uh, I don't know what both prompted. Well, I mean, I know what prompted me to wear my jersey today. But for you, Jacob, uh, what the heck? Like you. Why did this, you? Why are you wearing it? that, bro? I got this in the mail yesterday and I was like, going to wear it. Gonna it's wear clean. it. It's clean right now. It's the cleanest it's ever gonna be. Wow. Right after factory presses. Um, and what yeah, is number we, 10 to you? What? You just were able to choose or that's a specific player? Yeah, this is... Um, I actually don't really know what to say his last name because I've heard it been said a bunch of different ways. Okay. But he's from Poland and he's freaking sick. I've heard it... How I keep hearing it pronounced is Sohan. Okay. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah, but repping. a lot of people say Sochan which I don't know if that's right. That's how it looks. But I've heard it be Sohan, and that just sounds more Polish to me. So Okay. Uh, yeah, him. he's just cool. He's just, just like, I just think he's really funny, and he's really good, and he's a really good free throw shooter. And I think it's cool. He's like an antagonizer. He, like, talks shit to people, gets under people's, uh, under people's skin. I was like, that's sick. I love that guy. So it made me like the Spurs, because I don't really have a basketball team. I was like, and you, and then you got the hookup for the jersey, or yeah. Well, so do you, have you heard of Webb and Yamba? You know that. Is? Oh, the new player. Yeah, he's like the, the new Jesus of basketball. Yeah. You know, um, he got drafted to the Spurs, mm -hmm. and uh, and so when I went, I saw basically this video of uh, Jeremy Sohan, and it was like, or So Sean, it, it's pronounced. I don't know how to pronounce one hundred percent. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Um, that was like. Jeremy Sochan is is changing the game of basketball. And it was like a 20-minute YouTube video that was Sochan or Sochan? Sohan. Sohan. It is Sohan. I knew it. Um, and it was a really cool video. And mm -hmm. I just watched that video. I was like, I don't really have a basketball team that I like. I'm going to pick the Spurs because this guy okay. just seems cool and funny. So I went online and I was like, Jeremy Sohan, Jersey. And I go on the Spurs website and it's just all these different types of Web and Yama jersey jerseys because everyone's oh, so yeah. hyped that he's you know on the spurs and then on sale for like half off was a jeremy sohan jersey and it was the only one and i was like oh cool like my guy's the on sale guy like this is great and he's a smack talker on the court and that's why you like him yeah i think that's sick and he's really good and he's really good he's he's their new uh starting point point guard okay it, i guess replacing i don't know basketball Kawhi. I don't think Kawhi, Kawhi's not on the Spurs. No, but he used like wasn't he? Yeah, and he, he was. Well. He was. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I just don't hop, know. I'm just hopping into basketball. I know Kawhi was on the. Dude, Raptors you're a for new a fan. I'm a new fan. I'm getting into basketball. Just like just like me with the Islanders. I went to the game yesterday with Mister None Other than the Karate Kid himself, Ralph Machio. Machio. Oh, that's sick. Um, yeah, it was sick. I like this team because. They don't score any goals, so uh, that's why I'm supporting them. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, they they're really bad. They was, well, well, so in their defense, as I hear, damn, Ralph played, is about to flame you. He's gonna be like, I brought they played you to this three, game. They played three games the last four days, and oh. had to travel in between those days. So this was the fourth day. So they played Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. right? And apparently that's a lot of playing. So they're really tired. So that, that meant a 0-0 zero, zero game going into double overtime, into shootouts. And they lost on like, <laughs> all of the shootouts happen. Nobody scores anything. And then it's just down to like literally just whoever makes it. And then the guy that's just one-on-one, -on -one, just like, boop. <laughs> the whole game. The oh, whole game. We just wait, who are that. they playing? They were playing Don't say the... the leaves. What was the name? Flyers. Oh, Philadelphia Flyers. Philadelphia okay. Flyers. Okay. That's the only thing I know 
about hockey is that the Toronto Maple Leafs are like always the worst fucking team to lose against. No, no, no. They're just the worst team. Oh, great. Okay. But they have like the strongest fan base of any hockey team. <laughs> like their their well, seats are always sold out. And like ever, at least this is back in, you know, that's what you want when I was in Toronto. But uh, that's I wild. couldn't. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was really sad to see, you know, such a deep fan in Ralph Macho just the this, this, this sadness in his face when they just, <laughs> just scored crumbled. that last measly go. He was just like, <laughs> well, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and then I proceeded to take it like a two-hour train ride home, basically. Eat, pay, eat pay pizza along the way. I mean, it ended up being fine, but it was good. Dude, I've been taking the train mad times, and it's great. I like what? it. Yesterday, like going to the game. The path, right? Literally just two, I took the path up yeah, to yeah. the city and then took the, the Long Island Railroad Reserve. The lure. The lure? To you took, the yeah, lure. I took the path, I took the lure. I took the path to the lure. Uh, it got home, took the fucking one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one but, in the end. Those are my favorite. It's a nice train. Yeah, but dude, I got my first. I've never before had motion sickness in my life, but I decided I was going to be like a New York boy and read on the train. And I was standing <laughs> and reading. And I got eight pages in and I was like, Something is wrong. I've never <laughs> felt this way in a train before. I was like, yo, this place is small. <laughs> I was like, the people, the people need to get out of here. But um, I love the idea of you like being like, I'm going to be a little studious New York boy on the train. Yeah, I was like, down, I literally reading, had my playlist like, in, reading <laughs> playlist. <laughs> Dude, such kind intentions. It's reading this man's autobiography. But no. Who's, whose autobiography you reading on the train and getting a little sick while you're reading it? I don't want to mispronounce his name, but I think his name is David Welsh. It was the one that I was telling you about where the guy was reflecting on his life with, with Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah. But, dude, it's cold out here, bro. And I don't, have any co- I don't have any clothes, really, for this level of cold. You bring your Arcteryx? The Arcteryx, I think that we're referencing, is in my Atlanta bag like that I just left at production when we were maybe going to film. So out here, Damn. dude, and it was, it's funny because I, I did this a couple months back, this Columbia ad where they oh, had yeah. me do this jacket the where they said thing. so specifically, they said so specifically, you got to mention the Omni heat factor, right? <laughs> yeah. And they were saying, there was this quote, like the slogan of the brand was body heats body you know, heats jacket, heats body, heats jacket. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I was shooting the ad and they were like, you know, I was like, this is kind of, I, when I read the email, I was like, this is interesting verbiage. Why do they, like, why is body, heat, body, heats jacket, heats body? Why do I just body heats the jacket? Heats yeah. the body, boom. And they sent me back that. It's like, no, we would like it. We need it the other way. <laughs> and, was, and so... I just, th- if you go back on that video, if you, yeah, give that sponsorship, if you give that ad another run, you'll <laughs> notice I'm like giggling. Like, I wanted to, because after that, after they said that, I was like, well, this video has to be super posh. So I did the whole thing in a like British accent or an Australian Body heats accent. jacket, heats body, heats up the jacket again, which heats up the heat, yeah, which bro. then in turn heats up my body. I was like, well, that's the science, the scientist said that. That's Damn. Backed by well, hey, now but I don't have that jacket. I'll say you didn't bring that jacket. And what are you? Fucking cold. Cold. I need body heat jacket, heat body. So if you're out there, <laughs> <laughs> you're out there. Dude, I need my body heat jacket, heat body jacket, body. God. That's what Omni means, I guess. Omni. But Omni. Body. That's it's been it's been a uh, uh, interesting way of life living out here on the East Coast, like not. Being used, I'm used to being alone in my car. Now I'm like wearing headphones on the train. So basically, I'm a survivalist. And <laughs> do you feel different? Like, do you feel like, oh, this is like New York solo? This is, I'm, I'm changing. The only way I feel different is that I'm like, damn, uh, like I don't like having to try new places to eat. Like, oh, I'm really? Discovering. 
like not necessarily I don't like it, but the only time I have to do that is the weekend. And We're a lot of that busy. weekend gets eaten up. Yeah. And I make it over there and they're like, like, for example, I wanted to go to this steak frites restaurant that opened up back over COVID. Mm-hmm. And I get there at 1220. The restaurant opened at 12 and already the thing was around the block. So I'm like, ah, fuck. That's so that's what it's like. But living out here, I just be like, damn it, get out of here. But too many I don't people live here. I'm I'm just a tourist. I'm just a measly tourist. Before we get into Karate Kid talk, because what okay. the heck a new Karate Kid movie is talking or taking place? I was wait, really? Yeah, they're making a new Karate Kid, bro. Wait, Officially what? announced with Ralph Macchio and, and? Jackie Chan. Really? I was doing. Yeah, well, let's that, let's dive into that. So there's a new Karate Kid movie featuring none other than Eli. No, you're not in it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in it either, bro. Um, it's no, it's going to be a Chinese Karate Kid. Whoa. So what is Ralph um, doing in it? I I don't know. I haven't read the script. You haven't read the script either. Like I I don't know what's to happen. Wait, so you really didn't hear about this, Jacob? No, I did not hear about this. Yeah, so we're looking at an article right now, Sholo. Um, I'm, I don't, I don't get news. Ten thousand submissions anything. already. Yeah, um, but yeah. So Jacob, what we're reading is that they're looking for Li Fong, Li Fong, an actor to portray a Chinese or mixed race Chinese between fifteen and seventeen years old. So, sorry, bro. I don't think you fit into that. He's smart, but, scrappy. I'm both of those things, though. I can get conversationally good at Mandarin, but you don't. You're not fifteen. I keep the look fifteen. I'm available March through June 2024. All right. So you want to... Audition, bro. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if you're, I guess, a, what is it? A 14 to 17-year-old... Um, mixed, mixed race. Mixed race, I Chinese. Am mixed race. Not Chinese, um, but I am mixed race. Boy, you can submit an audition. I am a boy. But, I meet every requirement in like the Chinese part. How do you add to this story, though? What do you... <laughs> what do you... Like now that they're bridging the gap between Jackie Chan and Ralph Macchio, I got in. I, I know what's the story going to be. Oh, uh, you know, I know Ralph Macchio. I think I can get an audition. Oh, you're still thinking about the audition. Oh, okay. <laughs> can you audition for the bully? Do you have a favorite bully in media? Like, uh, my favorite is from Everybody Hates Chris. That ginger kid, <laughs> Caruso. <laughs> Caruso. I don't remember, dude. He's hilarious. Caruso. He's hilarious. I mean, who are some other? I mean, Logan Roy. Oh, no, no. Um, oh, wow. Jonah Hill and Superbad. <laughs> Jonah Hill is really good. Wait, I'm trying to think of Megan from Drake and Josh. <laughs> She's a good bully. Talk about subverting expectations. She was funny. She Wait, was, her I, name is Miranda. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda Cosgrove. Look at this article. Oh, Biff. Top. Of top bullies. Biff was the first one that came to mind. And yeah. The, the kid from um, Home Alone too. Not Home Alone Dude, too. Rachel McAdams. Oh. Oh, Zach Ward in A Christmas Story. Oh, that's pretty good. Is that... Who's the kid with the yellow eyes? Oh. oh <gasps> William Whoa, Zabka, the karate what kid. What the heck? He is a good bully. What about uh, in um, Bueller? What's his first Cameron? name? Cameron? No, I'm blanking on... What's the name? Ferris? Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the sister and the uh, principal, principal, they're pretty good bullies. I just love yeah. the, one of my favorite things about Ferris Bueller is the secretary lady for the principal. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, she's, yeah. Just, <laughs> she's just pulling pencils out of her hair. <laughs> Have you seen that part? I don't remember that, no. She's just sitting there and he's like yelling. And he's <laughs> like, I just can't believe Ferris is this, Ferris is that. And she's just not paying attention to him. She just keeps finding... Pencils, pencils in, her hair. in her hair. And she's like, oh, jeepers. She's pulling pencils out of her hair. Yeah, she couldn't. Bullies. She didn't have two left thumbs on her. You could probably play the bully. Uh, I would like to play a bully eventually. Like, I have so many unreserved feelings that I need to get out. Unresolved um, bullying tendencies that. Yeah, I never got the chance in school to bully, really, actually. And now I'm too popular to bully. So I really would like to do a role where I just get to lay one on someone, you know? Yeah, no. you, you really have crossed the line of, of fame to where you have to be nice all the time. 
Isn't that such a that sucks, man? Shitty level of fame to reach. Yeah, just famous enough that if you are mean, people will be like, "Wait, fuck that guy! I know that guy. He's famous and he's mean." I'm not handsome enough, not rich enough, not funny enough to make fun of people, um, mm. and too brown as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. If there's like a gauge of all the like sort of bad things you can do, I feel like yeah, you're like just, you're like just over. On all of them. I'm rolling disadvantage on yeah. many. You're too um, good looking like to call people ugly because then that's just like, oh, this is like this really good looking guy just making fun of ugly people. Like that sucks. You know, a little too wealthy, a little too famous, a little too brown, just a little too everything. God, he's just got so much. Sholito living, living in surplus. I, I, I have a question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> After we digress from that, <laughs> sure. Um, thanks, Jacob. I got you, bro. Where were you? Were you just out of town? You were in Barcelona, right? Barcelona, and we fantastico. Yeah. Did you? What were you doing out there? How? How? I mean, I know what you were doing out there, but how did it go? Your flesh and blood tournament. Uh, I went eleven and three for the weekend. X three. What does that mean? It means I got 11 wins and three losses. No, I mean, I know that, but where oh. did you place? Oh, I wasn't in, like, the main, main, main tournament. I just did a bunch of, uh, like, smaller side tournaments. Um, it was pretty sweet. I um, won, like, an $800 play mat, which is pretty cool. Whoa. Um, yeah, pretty sweet. Oh, I did a cosplay for the first time ever. Um with this lovely woman, Rachel, and uh, the prof, actually. What? Is, with the professor, what? yes. <laughs> yes, I was cosplaying with what the professor. What was your cosplay? You were so there's a hero that uh, my YouTube channel, Three Floating, we got to spoil one of the new heroes for Flesh and Blood, and his name is Max the Hype Nitro. Wait, and we've talked about this on the podcast before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just a happy accident that when they made this, uh, this character, he just happens to look like me so much um so handsome handsome super buff you know uh now that you're growing out your beard pretty much are you trying to find the reveal video um uh, oh this is the vlog yeah we made a vlog for uh for our world's barcelona trip yeah so i cosplayed i did really well in, the, in all my little tournaments that i did um and i got to do a little cosplay it was it was a little unfortunate i i couldn't bring a lot of the stuff to Barcelona that I wanted to for the cosplay. So mine just kind of sucked a little bit. And Wait, why? Why couldn't you bring a lot of the stuff that you wanted? Well, I was traveling before Barcelona and all I could bring was basically his weapon is this huge wrench called Banksy. So I was able to check this giant ass wrench, but he's got like a, a gas mask that he wears that I have that I just forgot. And oh, the, great. The, yeah, that's that's why I couldn't. The woman uh, who, Rachel, who I was cosplaying with, she's like a legit actual cosplayer, you know, spent like two months on her costume and it looked freaking amazing. And I'm just sitting there in a in a black beater with some spray paint on it and like some, some khaki pants and Aiden shoes and this big ass wrench with duct tape on it. Yeah, but dude, that wrench that I was looking around was like, I want to say 40 pounds and I totally could have killed someone with it. They didn't say anything to me at the airport and they said nothing to me as I was walking into the venue, dragging this 40 pound wrench on the floor. And it's like, <laughs> and I just walked what right in heck? and they didn't say anything to me. You, before you leave packing, do I have everything? <laughs> I have my wench. <laughs> what else? Well, I got the wench. Um, I have Don't my need quads. Any extra socks or underwear. I have, but- Two pairs of underwear. You don't no my, mask. You don't. Yeah, I didn't have the mask. You don't <laughs> does when he's running low on underwear. Um, d- no. What does he do? He does the front, back, inside out, front, inside out, back. Why four times though? That's he's, crazy. You can get four uses out of it. But Bro. front, Wait, but then you front for a day, flip it around, back for the day, inside out, back. And then inside out, front. 
I would give you one inside out, maybe, but the front <laughs> to back thing is really kind of weird because then you're like, so the first day my ass sweat, <laughs> everything that developed over that day, and ball sweat on one side. I'm just going, Whoop. if I switch them around, <laughs> they'll cancel each other out. I think so. I think that's the that's the right. strat. Oh come on, don't and act like you've never look- done that. Um, I, the most I've done is just the inside out. Yeah. What I, well now what I just do is I just, I'll wear my underwear and if something happens, I'll just wear my pants to go no underwear. You go and start and go commando. Yeah. That's but, a real it, man but, right there. That's a I real mean, fucking lad. Uh, well, I'll, I'm a real man, I guess, I suppose maybe once a fucking bi-monthly. Like, okay. I'm, this, this situation isn't happening to me, but right now I'm, I'm hotel living and I'm getting to that point. I have two more pieces of underwear and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> do you, yeah, when you're in a hotel, do they do your laundry for you? You have to pay for that. Yeah, huh? if I fucking pay for it, they'll uh, do my laundry okay, yeah, for yeah. it. What the heck? Do my, what is it? My mother? No. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even do it. They make your bed for you. Why would they do the laundry? It's kind of like the same thing. What if, okay, what if you hid your laundry with your linens, with your bed sheet? Yeah. They got to wash that. Yeah, I hope you realize, Jacob, the fucking housekeeper doesn't come pick up my sheets, take them to the washer, and make sure that those same sheets get on. I'm sure. What they do is they put it in the bin. They get whatever the folded sheets that they have on the cart are, put them on the bed, and then get the... If I, if I do that, if I put my fucking whatever, my socks, my cummy tissue socks in the, <laughs> in the, in the mattress... With the with the comfort and everything like that, they're gonna get lost. I'm not gonna get them back. <laughs> Did you ever have a pair of socks that would just Jacob? Ah, uh-huh. in the world of movies, I um wanted to mention I got this new streaming service. What another one called Gallery? Um, and it's basically pay for it. How much is it? Um, I'm paying ten dollars a month. Okay. It's curated and started by Wes Anderson, director oh. of movies that we know and potentially love. Moonrise and Kingdom, Royal Tenenbaums, Fantastic Mr. Fox, Isle yeah. of Dog. Um, most recently, Asteroid City. But anyways, he's um he basically has like a a curated thing where he has directors, actors, writers, monthly, weekly on talk about movies that they like and they show those movies. And it's really good. So far, everything that I've seen so far has been like, well, granted, I've only seen documentaries. I haven't seen any narrative pieces, but the documentaries that I've seen are crazy. And it's just, oh, it's it's crazy time, bro. Wait, so... So you basically click on someone and then you get to see their recommendations. You can't do that. that. That's like that's like one way. That's one way to filter, like to sift through them. They have, yeah, different artists. Like, for example, one of the documentaries that I saw was suggested by this director who said, you know, I love documentaries. That's where I draw inspiration from. Here's a bunch of here's a list of documentaries that I really like. So I watched some of those. But yeah, some of them, like Taylor Russell of Bones and All uh, fame just recently is one of the curators and she has some suggestions, you know, of of movies that inspired her, like more recent movies that have come out. So it's just cool. I like, I've been having like, I go back and forth between watching like Scott Pilgrim on Netflix and these documentaries like, that I would literally not be able to find otherwise, really, unless I wow, go to the library cool. or whatever. How is the new Scott Pilgrim show? It's pretty cool so far. Like, I haven't made it through. I watched the first episode and it kind of lost me because the first episode is really kind of just like scene by scene. They just are recreating a lot of the moments from the movie. Um, so I ended up giving it the short end of the stick, I suppose, because I stopped after the first episode, but I was talking to someone who was like, no, you got to make it through because now it's really different. Like it takes a whole different, there's like multiverse and oh. this other stuff with the show. So I'm making it through. I mean, the animation is cool. 
it's really, as we've mentioned before, it's the coolest to see new animation and stuff, but um, I just haven't watched all of it yet. Yeah. I'm like, just been watching movies. I watched Saltburn, bro. You oh, heard of this one, bro? I was just talking to uh, my friend last night about Saltburn, and he was just like, dude, who is this Barry Keegan guy? Like, I've never seen him before. He's like, he's amazing. And I was like, yeah, that guy's cracked. He's like, it's the only reason, you know, my girlfriend wanted to take me to this movie was to go uh, see him act again. And I was like, dang, that's, that's wild. Is it pretty good or no? I, they loved it. They loved it, I will say. What did they like about it? They really liked how it felt. This is how my friend Aiden described it. He really liked uh, that it felt like art house cinema, like they were trying to do something in a non-pretentious way. And he felt like it was just cool to see someone do that. He said it's really, really, really weird. But he loved Barry Keegan. He didn't love the, um, they both didn't like, or not didn't like. Jacob Lordy. As much. Like they, this is like he described it. He he felt like the Jacob Elordi character um, just as an actor. Oh, what was he? Yeah. He said that when he was acting and he was, you know, really pushing for things, like you could feel him like really pushing for something. And that's like the max that he could possibly get to. And when the bear, when Barry Keegan was in his role and he was being fucking crazy, it felt like it was just breathing for him. Like, he could have gone so much more, and that's what made his character really creepy and really scary. And I was like, "Oh, that's interesting," because they're—I mean, they're both like writers, you know. And I was like, "Oh, that's interesting to interesting thing to observe." Like, a, that's—I feel like there's a very specific thing about an actor's performance that I feel like most people wouldn't really think about too much. Um, and you haven't seen it yet? I haven't seen it yet. He—he he talked like it was really cool. I—I I don't mind when things are weird. Um, the pretentious part is when thing is when that type of stuff starts to bug. How can you tell when something like just if the like, same thing would be shot pretentiously? Like, what are some pretentious movies? I think it's just a feeling. Oh, pretentious movies, or like, what do you what do you mean by that? How would I be able to identify that? No, yeah, yeah. I think it's just a feeling in how like if you're watching something, it feels pretentious, like very self serving. I'm trying to th- like, uh, dude, I had a movie that was on the tip of my tongue. Well, I guess while you think about it, yeah. um, basically, yeah. What did you think? I I thought it was cool. I agree with a lot of what Aiden was saying about how it's nice and refreshing when directors are making you know decisions, like decisive thoughts and and choices that are experimental. I love that. Loved the you know. Aspect ratio, loved the colors, loved the, you know, format, how it, it was very, uh, you know, you're seeing the yarn spool out or whatever. I, I love movies like that. It reminded me, honestly, a lot of like Wong Kar Wai in a lot of the ways that he likes to mix sexual things, in, like things in sexual nature with, with story. Mm. It was just like, it was, so for those reasons, similarly to the Wong Kar Wai, like they're unsettling. But I was th- like, I was in the theater alone watching Softcore at 10 a.m. Ah. So I was, I was kind of just like, mm. I was just like, dang, this is a lot. Keegan's f- sucking cummy, like sp- uh, bath fucking water. drainage out of the bathtub, bruh. Yo, my man Jacob Elordi's wanking himself in the bathtub, yeah? And then my man Keegan's watching through the blinds. He's like, oh my gosh, the drain's going down. You know, Jacob's getting out of the tub. He runs to the tub. Slurps up from the drain. What? Slurps up from the drain, fam. Jacob, that's the tip of the iceberg, my guy. It's wild. That's, it's, it gets crazy. And that's the thing that like, the... I I did enjoy myself. Check my letterbox. But I like I <laughs> it just Dude, the third act lost me. It was getting too crazy. I was like, how are these people so distraught and yet so horny still at the same time? Stop it. Stop. <laughs> Why are you depressedly feelings. having sex? How do you do that? It's like, stop that. 
There's you death around orgy? you, fam. Get yourself together. There's death Put around you, fam. Why are you doing a depressed orgy? Should I tell my parents it's a really good date night movie and just send them on that as a joke? Uh, no. They actually would be so f- pissed at me. My parents would be so mad if I did that. That's wild. But it was, it was of, a movie. I watched, yeah. I thought of my pretentious movie. And this is just okay. for me. Um, okay, of course. I didn't think of the name, but you're going to have to remember, rem- help me remember for it. It's the Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, Imitation Jesse, game? No, Jesse Plemons. And what's Jesse Plemons' wife's name? I feel bad that I'm referring to her like this, but I, I just can't remember. Oh, her. Power of the Dog. Power of the Dog. Dude, why do you have so many issues with that movie? <laughs> what's that movie? That the Pretentious uh, is basically when something's popular and Jacob doesn't like it. No, He's like, That's no, 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 no. But uh, Pretentious, as I'm hearing now, is very subjective. It's just yeah. your taste. Your taste is super... There's people who eat that right up. I guess there's pretentious people. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Do you think you're a pretentious person? No. Uh, the first time I ever thought that uh, Sholito liked uh, sort of the nicest things in life <laughs> was when uh, little Sholito moved out of the house for the first time. Yeah. And Sholito gets to pick anything he wants to furnish his house. Mm-hmm. Okay. And. Sholito calls me and he says, Jacob, I just picked up these um, very nice, immaculate um, walnut chairs. These walnut chairs. And the the s- stools? Stools, stools. These okay. walnut, uh, handcrafted, uh, veneer, walnut, metal, steel, okay. chrome chairs. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you being like, I don't know, the way you describe it, you're like, bro, you're going to fucking love these stools, bro. They're sick. Yeah. These are some nice ass stools. And I just get there, and they were. They were, like, the nicest little, like, these, like, fancy little round things all around them. The back's, like, floating from the bottom. That's well, that's like, what it what? takes for Jacob, bro. Oh. Well, coming, coming from you, yeah, I guess who, that's true. who has Ninja Turtle posters <laughs> <laughs> on the walls, you're like, are we fine like, dining right now? Fancy ass. He's got green he's, ants on his bread, but damn, these chairs are nice. Yeah, I. And now, th- I mean, those chairs have survived two moves now. So there's, oh, I'm those getting are my the money's worth in your parents' house. That's true. yeah. I'm 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 getting my money's worth, but it's it is uh not a. It's something that, honestly, I as I do more learning, I realize although it is sometimes a burden to um, navigate, not a burden, I should say, but like um, new for us to be navigating coming into money. What's most important, bro, and I've and I've heard this from so many people is we have to give that money away when we have the opportunity to, like, you know, because of the way that our world works capitalism and money is really important although and that those are things that you know yeah so we got to share the wealth when we can um so shop at your local lgs your local game store don't buy from the big box brands go to the mom and pop shop buy your magic cards your flesh and blood cards right there right from the people who uh, care about you and support your community that's that's right bro that's right. That's right. Do you want to do a song of the week, bro, to end us out? You know what? Sure. Why not? Uh, my song of the week is going to be uh, Homecoming by Sir Kanye West. All right. So Homecoming by Kanye West is your choice, Jacob. Homecoming by Kanye West. Um, my choice is, uh, what's it called? Mosquito by Pink Panthers. That shit has been in my head all I, I actually have not listened to another song in the past two days. Play it. Or sing it. Sing it. She says, my favorite line, it's so romantic. She says, I just had a dream I was dead and I only cared because I was taken from you, Jacob. She says Jacob? Wow. No, I'm saying that's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I yeah, like it's that. just it's got that Jersey drill beat. You know, it's just great. Oh, I was expecting like an R&B hyper pop. Thing. No, it's like it's like Jersey Drill, hyper pop, cutesy, Pink Panthers, and for the team, 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 Monica, you got your song of the day, week. Well, week. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 
yes, I, I think I'm gonna butcher his name, but it's <gasps> uh Young Lucas and Peso Pluma La Bebe remix. Woo! La Bebe. Sing it. Quiere que le ponga música para que <laughs> la bebe. Like Lit. Uh, mine is um, Off My Feet by Phantom Threat. Man's got hit by a car randomly like three weeks ago. Woke up in the hospital and he was in the hospital for like two, three weeks learning how to walk and getting surgeries. And the homies brought the gear to him and he recorded an album like from the bed. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, on some Kanye That's Through the Wire. Through the Wire stuff. So yeah. since you are playing Through the Wire earlier in college dropout, I thought about this. So the song is called Off My Feet because he got hit by a car. Get it? Whoa, that's cool. He's very, uh, very frank about it. So check it out. One of the bars goes, "Why you gotta be so reckless in the Lexus? Slow down." <laughs> 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 it was a hit and run. So, dude, he's just like calling out this guy. Yeah, you fucking hit me. Why you diss me? Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> one of the lines too. That's my song of the week. Song of the week, and on that. Um, we would like to thank you. Welcome to December, Jacob. We're closing out on the end of the fucking year, bro. Can you believe about that? We can't yes, play it. We it muted. Won't. We muted Jacob. Aww. Yeah. Like it. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's. But we're closing out on the end of the year, bro. So what are you? What are we to do? It's crazy already. A, it's the new that. year. I have a thousand dollar bet with Josh Lee Choir that I can dunk a basketball by the end of the year and I haven't been training. So that, that's kind of what I'm dreading. How close are you? You could grab and rim? I can I'm like here. Okay. I can like grab rim pretty comfortably. But I need to get like wait. I need to get like here probably. So what is that? Like five inches? That's nothing, bro. Just wear around a weighted vest all day and all right. jump around on top of things, bro. <sighs> yeah. I got this out. I am one half of the pod. Sholo Maridueña repping the <laughs> Islanders. Um, <laughs> JK, I'm so sorry. I Ralph was just Ralph. in New York. Like, <laughs> no, Ralph was so kind. He was bummed. We were also bummed. They were on a three win streak. I just, I was the lucky, I was the unlucky charm. Jacob's the other Spurs fan. I'm the lucky charm, though. I've never been to San Antonio, but I love Sohan. I think that guy's he's got something, something special about him, you know? So I'm a fan. I'm a follow. I'm a Spurs fan now. <laughs> Peace. This episode of Lone Lobos is a Lone Lobos production produced by Monica Tamayo and JMKM with intro music by Nicholas Gray. Like what you hear? Check us out on Instagram at Lone Lobos.